This is a tutorial on exponential growth and decay. The population growth of a bacteria on a piece of moldy bread can be modeled as an exponential growth function. The initial colony is 5,000 cells and the population increases at 50% per week. Find the function that best models the bacterial growth. What will the population be after one week? And what will the population be after five weeks? Here we're given the example y is equal to 2 times 7 to the x. Notice x, our variable, is in the exponent of 7. So this is an exponential function. We're given a second example. We have y is equal to 1 half to the x. Notice again x is our variable and it's in the exponent of 1 half. So this is an exponential function. Now exponential functions have a standard form that they're written in and this is y is equal to a times b to the x. Our b is our base, and it's a constant, it's some number. a is another constant, or another number, that just acts as a coefficient to our b to the x term. So in our first example, 2 would be our a, and 7 would be our b. In our second example, 1 half is our b, and we don't really have an a, but you can always multiply anything by 1 because you'll get the same number. So you can think of our a as just being 1. Now let's try graphing an exponential function. Here we're given y is equal to 1 times 2 to the x. Our a is 1, our b is 2. Now if I multiply anything by 1, I don't change its value. So I'm just going to drop this 1 and I'm going to consider this y is equal to 2 to the x. Now if I want to graph y is equal to 2 to the x, I'm going to have to pick several x values, plug them in to this equation, solve for y, and then I'll have several ordered pairs, x and y values, that I can plot on my axis. Values that I'm going to pick for x to plug in are going to be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. I pick these because there's an even number of them on both sides of my y-axis and I want to see what this graph is going to look like. So if I plug in negative 3 for x, I'll have y is equal to 2 to the negative third power. Now when you have a negative power that means this whole term goes in the denominator. So I can write this as 1 over 2 to the third power. Now 2 to the third power is 8. So this is 1 eighth. So when my x value is negative 3, my y value is 1 eighth. Next I'll plug in negative 2. If y is equal to 2 to the negative 2 power. This is the same as 1 over 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so this is 1 fourth. Next I plug in negative 1. If y is equal to 2 to the negative first power, or 1 over 2 to the first power. Anything to the first power is just itself, so this is 1 half. Next I'm going to plug in 0 of y is equal to 2 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is just 1, so here we have y is equal to 1. Next I plug in a positive 1 of y is equal to 2 to the first power. 2 to the first power is just 2, so when my x value is 1, my y value is 2. Next I'm going to plug in 2 for x of y is equal to 2 to the second power. 2 squared is 4, so my y value is 4. And then lastly I'm going to plug in 3. If y is equal to 2 to the third power, 2 to the third power is 8. So when my x value is 3, my y value is 8. So we can plot these points, negative 3 and 1 eighth. So right about there, negative 2 and 1 fourth negative 1 and 1 half, 0 and 1, 1 and 2, 2 and 4, and 3 and 8. I can connect these points with a smooth curve, and my graph will look something like that. Let's look at this graph a little bit closer. What happens to this graph is we move along the x-axis in the negative direction. Well, when we plugged in negative 1, we got 1 half. When we plugged in negative 2, we got 1 fourth. When we plugged in negative 3, we got 1 eighth. In fact, as we keep going in the negative direction, 
we're getting a fraction that's getting smaller and smaller. So our y value is getting closer and closer to zero. It will never reach zero though because there's no value that we can plug in to y is equal to two to the x. There's no x value that can make us get a y of zero. It's always two to some power. So this graph will never ever cross y is equal to zero. It'll never cross the x-axis. That makes the x-axis an asymptote. An asymptote is just a value on your function that your function can't reach, but it gets closer and closer to. Now, as we move in the positive x direction, our function value or our y value also goes to infinity. As x gets very large, our y value gets very, very large. Because this happens, we would call this an exponential growth function. As x gets larger, our y grows. Our y gets very, very big. Now let's try applying an exponential growth to a real life problem. Here we're told that if the population of roaches can grow by 40% every 24 hours, and there are a dozen roaches in the wall of a building, how many will be there a week from now? Well, if we're going to fit this population growth to an exponential function, that means we need the standard form of an exponential function. And that's y is equal to a times b to the x. Now, I'm going to call the population our y value. And if I call the population our y value, that means x is the only other thing in this problem that's changing. And that's time. Now right off the bat, before we even start, when time is equal to zero, our population, or our y, is equal to a dozen, so 12. So if we plug this in to our standard formula, our y is 12, we don't know what a, we don't know what b is, and our x is zero. Well, b to the zero power, anything to the zero power, is just one. So what we have here is 12 is equal to a times one. a times one is just a, so our a is 12. That means if our a is 12, then in a standard form here, our a is always our starting value. It's our dozen. It's whatever our population is or whatever our y is when x is equal to zero. That also makes it our y-intercept because x is equal to zero. So a is our starting value. It's also our y-intercept. Now b, b is the number that we're multiplying together again and again and again to get our exponential growth. It's the base of our exponent. So we have to think about what we want our population to grow by. In time one, when x is equal to one, then we're gonna have 40% more population. We're gonna have 40% more roaches in the wall. We're gonna have 12 plus 40% of 12, or 12 times 0 0.4. Well, that means we're going to have y is equal to 12 times 1 plus 0 0.4, or 12 times 1.4. 1 1.4 1 would be 140% of the population. Well, if when x is equal to 1, my y is equal to 12 times 1.4, let's plug this back in. Here I have y is equal to a times b to the x. I know what my a is. My y is 12 times 1.4. My a is 12. My b I don't know. And my x is 1. Well, b to the 1 power is just b. So we have 12 times 1.4 is equal to 12 
times b. Divide both sides by 12, and these will cancel, and we get b is equal to 1.4. So our b is 140%. This is always the case with an exponential growth problem. b is always equal to 1 plus what we call r. r is our rate of increase. In this case, 40%. So we have our exponential growth formula now. This is y is equal to 12, because our a is 12, times 1.4, that's our b, to the x power. Now we're asked to solve this. What is our population a week from now? Well, our population changes every 24 hours. So in a week, we have seven 24 hours, or seven days. So our x is going to be seven. If we plug that back into here, we get y is equal to 12 times 1.4 to the seventh power. 1.4 to the seventh power, well, that's approximately 10.54. This is still multiplied by 12. And if we do that, we get 126.5 as our population. So there'll be 127 roaches in the wall after a week. So that's how you can use an exponential growth problem to model population growth.